Okay, I'm assuming that a good portion of you are here simply because you just want to know how to make a note, find and follow the shortest path from point A to B. So I'll get to that right after a quick overview of this starting project. At the top of the main scene, there's a world environment and a directional light 3D. Below that, there's a player scene, a self-explanatory, and an AI node, which is a mesh instance with a sphere mesh and an empty script attached. Then there's a node called target location. It's also a mesh instance, but with a pyramid-shaped mesh. Next are the north and south areas. They both have a bunch of static bodies, one for the floor, and the rest are all randomly placed obstacles. Then there's the bridge and the gate. They're both static bodies, and the gate has a script attached, which has a little bit of code that causes the gate to open and close when I press G. Lastly, there's a platform static body. The script attached to it has code that's identical to the gates. The only difference is that it's toggled when I press P. Links to the starter and the completed projects will be available in the description. Now let's find some paths. Begin by adding a navigation region 3D to the scene, then add the north and south areas, and then bake it. And I'm going to rename this to areas nav region. Next, add a navigation agent 3D to the AI node. Navigation agents don't have a transform property, so they need to be the child of something that does. Now enter the AI script and grab that navigation agent. Also export a variable, I'm going to call it target location with the type of node 3D. Go back to the main scene, and then drag and drop the target location mesh instance onto that variable we just exported. Just a heads up, you can only export nodes in alpha 11 or higher. If you're using 10 or less, you have to export a node path, and then use that with the get node function. Now define a ready function, and inside of it, set the target location of the navigation agent to the global position of the target location mesh instance. Another heads up, the global position property is only available in alpha 12. If you're using anything else, you have to go with good old globaltransform.origin. Next, define a physics process function, and inside of that, use the navigation agent to first check if the target is reachable. If so, you can call get next location, then add the code to make this node move towards that location. Once this node is within a certain range of that location, get next location will move on to returning the next point in the path. Lastly, that range can be set in the editor here, or in code with this. And that's all you really have to do for basic navigation. And if you notice that the AI starts spazzing out when it gets to its target, you can fix this by also making sure that its target reached is false before moving your node. So now that that's out of the way, let's look at some of the coolest new features with Godot 4's navigation. Now there's a navigation server. It automatically runs in the background, and any navigation node added to the scene tree will communicate with it without any extra work on your part. It allows for paths to be found easily across multiple navigation regions. You can also access it directly to get more control, but I won't be going into detail on that in this video. I'm just covering what it allows us to do. And one of those things is dynamically update paths when there's changes to a navigation region. I have this platform node here to demonstrate this. So I'm going to add another navigation region, give it a nav mesh, set its position the same as the platform, and call it platform nav region. And then I'm going to make it a parent of the platform node, and hit bake. Now there's this little nav region in the space between the two areas. There's these little gaps between the platform nav region and the area nav region. In order for the navigation server to find paths across multiple regions, those regions need to be touching. When you bake a navigation mesh, it's always going to leave a little bit of space between it and the edges of the geometry it's parsing. So to get this nav mesh to extend out a bit, I'm going to take the two areas from the area's nav region and also make them a child of the platform navigation region. But I don't want this platform navigation region to bake this whole area, just a space slightly bigger than the platform. In Alpha 12, there's a feature that allows us to do this. So go into the navigation region, open up the nav mesh, and then go into filters. In here you'll see the baking AABB. If the width, height, and depth are all set to zero, the navigation region will bake everything inside of it. But if they're all set to a number higher than zero, it'll only bake whatever's inside that area. And the X, Y, and Z will be the position of that area relative to the navigation region's position. And it's also important to note that these navigation mesh need to be flush with each other. If the platform navigation mesh is too big and it overlaps the area navigation mesh, this won't work. So I'm going to take the platform and the two areas out of the platform navigation region, and then I'm going to make the platform navigation region a child of the platform, so it will move with it when I press P. Now I'm going to put the target location on one side of the platform, the AI on the other side, and then I'm going to move the platform up a little bit. When we run the game, the AI remains still, because the target location isn't reachable. But when I hit P, the platform lowers, completes a connection, and the AI finds a path. Now we can also enable and disable regions. I'm going to duplicate this platform nav region and rename it as bridge nav region. Then I'm going to position it over the bridge. In the gate script, I'm going to make it so the navigation region is disabled when the gate's closed and enabled when it's open. Then I'll position the AI and the target location on either side of it. 
And since the gate starts out as closed, then Aboriginal start out as disabled. And just like before, the AI only moves when there's a path available. And lastly, I'll show you the new navigation layer system. A good way to demonstrate this is with AI of different sizes. So I'm going to duplicate this AI node and call it Big AI. I'll make its mesh unique and then set its radius to 2 and its height to 4. Next, we'll set the Big AI and the target location on either side of a narrow passageway. And when we run the game, the Big AI is moving through it even though it should be too wide to do so. I'll add another navigation region, call it Big Nav Region, make it a parent of the two areas, and in its navigation mesh, I'll go down to Agents, set its radius to 2, and hit Bake. Now we have a nav mesh that excludes all the passageways that should be too narrow for our big AI. Near the bottom of the navigation region inspector, you can see this section called navigation layers. Check two as well. Then in the inspector of the big AI's navigation agent, you'll see a navigation layers section as well. Uncheck one and then check two. Now when this navigation agent is finding a path, it'll ignore all navigation regions that don't have layer two checked. So when we run the game, now poor big AI needs to take the long way around. Hopefully this video was helpful and thanks for watching.